Hi hey guys, it's Shaft, and welcome to episode number seven of This Week at SE2S. This is part number, what, seven, six? I don't even remember now. Um, Matt, do you? Yeah. This is match number seven. It's three, seven. Three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes it is, it's three, three. Okay, well that answers all of those questions. By the way, this is Matt. If you didn't pick up on that, you're stupid. But either way, um, we're going to be hopping right on into this game. This is going to be a really awesome match. Um, this is Pro League format, King of the Hill style, uh, clan war between Impulse Gaming, Team SES. And guys, we're here to bring it to you because that's what we do. We do it to you and we do it right. Okay, so here on the bottom left-hand side of a Daybreak Ladder Edition, it is the Red Russian Terror Stazikstan, aka Stoops. And here we go in the top right-hand side, playing for Impulse Gaming, it's the Pretty Purple Protoss, Arya, coming from the Game of Thrones, killing off the best two players uh, on SES, in my opinion. Now, can he or she, it, whatever you want to call them, beat the Red Russian? We will find out, guys. And boy, oh boy, is that going to be exciting. Huh. All right. Oh, gosh, man. This is like our fifth Protoss versus Protoss? Something like that. Yeah, that's our fifth. Indeed, sir. Wow. Hold on one second, guys. It looks like we've got a little bit of glitch with a uh, starboard right this second. Bear with me one moment. Huh. Man. Yeah, tools not working properly. That's never good. Uh, let's just close that real quick. Turn off starboard. You're missing all the action, Shaft. He just folded Zerglings into his base. Yeah, I definitely paused the game. Hush. So nice, aren't I? Okay, let's see if this works now. Add software capture. Dun dun dun. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I swear it won't happen again. Probably lying to you though. All right, we've got a little progress. Bear with me one more moment. Dun, 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 dun. It's not quite right. All right, we are almost there. Perfect. Tickety tack, tickety tack. You are wickety whack. Oh, you are so clever. You should write your own songs. I do. Oh, uh, ho, ho, Shaft is also a musician. Ah, uh, I'm a rapper. I don't know if they're the same thing. Like a candy rapper? <laughs> Not quite. Man. Alright, we are almost there, guys. Bear with me one more moment. I just think you want to just stall this out because it stews. Uh, that's very possible. I want everyone to be completely bored when we start the game. Just so Remember, mm -hmm. this is serious business. Indeed. We have to be serious. Super serious. Why are you so serious? Alright guys, and we are ready, Freddy, steady, Betty. Do it. Alright, so, don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but I'm sure it was good. My dog is asleep and barking. He must be having a great time. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. But that's, Yes, we can. You can? <laughs> yeah, I have a really good microphone, but that that's my dog barking in his sleep. 
Anyways, uh, it's PvP from what I understand. We will be seeing Dark Templar from one person, Phoenix from the other, and if we're lucky, maybe an Immortal or Colossi, somewhere between. Uh, how far from the truth am I? Um, well, I don't know, man. That's pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty spot on. We've seen all of those things. But, uh, yeah. You know what? There goes the double gas. So I just want to point out, guys, Dollar General has the best chocolate chip cookies in the world. And if you happen to drink it with a glass of milk that you poured for your uh, slash ex girlfriend How? last night, How do you... that's been sitting in the milk uh, in, in the fridge, it's extra good. How do you drink cookies? You drink the milk that you poured for your ex girlfriend oh, okay. uh, last night that she didn't drink, so you stuck it back in the fridge. Yeah. All right. Oh, so. Stu's got that gas right away. Uh, a lot earlier before Arya here. What do you think Stu's is planning? Well, it tells us he either wants Phoenix and a lot of them fast. Well, he's getting two, three workers. He'll probably pull uh, one more off this uh, assimilator here. Uh, just knowing him, he usually does that. Uh, I, I still think Phoenix are a pretty good. Excuse me, pretty good option here for him. But it tells us he wants some uh, tech a little bit earlier than his partner. Right. While you... Yep, so we've got the Stalker being Chrono boosted out mm -hmm. uh, for both players. That's really a huge... Just basically, it's a staple. There. All right, Stu's going to get the Mothership Core first. Arya's going to grab that Twilight Council. See, usually Stu's will take two out of three workers on both of these. The fact that he has not done that for the second one makes me think this is probably a mistake. Alright, Mothership Core coming out for Arya as well. Mm -hmm. Twilight Council and for Arya as well. Stu's is going to use the uh, Mothership Core Stalker to her rest. It's actually pretty common right now. Mm -hmm. um, Arya is actually uh, three harvesters ahead right now. So uh, this is kind of coming down to a pretty big situation for both of these players. Right. And there's the Dark Shrine. What do you think will come? Archons or Dark Templar? I'm going to go ahead and say Dark Templar for that early harassment again. Okay. It's much more viable now than it was before. Mm -hmm. And with the, you know, the fact that most Protoss players go Sky Toss now, they're missing out on some early game detection. True that, my friend. Now, oracles can detect if that's correct. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. But again, at the, that uh, that costs a lot of energy. Uh huh. And if they send that oracle away from base and they don't even know there's a dark shrine, it can be too late. Uh, understood. Now, uh, oh, nice little time warp here, and he's going ahead killing off that stalker here as well. And will he see the Dark Shrine in the works? Uh, he definitely does, my friend. Yes, he does. Oh. And here comes an Oracle from Stu's. Will the Oracle make a big enough difference? That becomes a question. That Mothership Corps barely surviving there. There <laughs> goes that poor probe. Poor probe. Poor probe. Alright, so he does he retreat here, or does he take an, a base? Find out next. Well, After the commercial break. Looks like Stu's is walling off his ramp. I'm not sure. Oh, DTs. He is prepared. Well, he can't actually stop uh, anything. He actually has to stop the DTs completely. Because he there does not have detection. There we go. Perfect. So, yep. He's, uh, he was smart enough when he saw the Dark mm -hmm. Shrine that he got the Oracle immediately. Because he didn't build it before then. And he saved up his energy for the pure purpose of killing off those Dark Templars. Can he expand now? Um, he's going to go ahead and expand, yes. Um, his biggest thing, though, is he's going to need detection mm -hmm. in case of continued Dark Templar harass. As Oracle, he's going to grab another Oracle. And the Oracle, you know, he's got to make sure he has enough energy and that that envisions off cooldown. We have a Warp Prism coming out, so if he doesn't stop the Dark Templar harassed, this could be very, very big, especially since Arya is expanding as well. Stu's still sitting with two out of three workers on that assimilator. Hmm. Alright, and we have a forge coming down, so he's probably going to grab the cannons there to get the DTs out of the way. 
how do these players transition? Like, what's the next step? He's got to, well, the next step is to get the base up, and then it's going to be a matter of controlling the map to their advantage. You know, when do I want a timing attack, and when do I want to expand, and then it's going to, that's when we're going to see, you know, the unit compositions come out based on what they see. Understood, understood, my friend. Um, you know what I really want to see? Carriers. Carriers are pretty great, <laughs> especially do, with Tempest. Do you deal with those a lot in PvP, or do the games tend to end um, before that? The games tend to end before. I had one match. Actually, oh, let's point out the Dark Templar harass in the main mineral line there, oh, picking okay. off nine workers. Oh, wow. Now, back to your question. I have had one match where the game went to uh, about, you know, four base play, and we mm -hmm. saw carriers come out, and uh, that was... That was scary. It was a uh, Void Ray Tempest carrier build, and that's really hard to stop. Gotcha. Now, we should point out that in the expansion of Aria, there are 12 workers mining. There are also 12 workers mining total for Stu's right now. Stu's actually going to go ahead and pick off a probe. Two probes now. <clears throat> Aria Kinda schooling just... these SCS players. He's just uh, flirting with danger right now. <laughs> Stu's is 26 supply behind. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice. Look at Stu's main mineral line. Wow. Stu's getting wrecked right now. Uh, there's 18 workers mining now for Stu's. He's actually uh, picked off 14 of Stu's workers. And again, he's forced these oracles. Mm hmm into the pure defense. They cannot leave base. They have they're dedicated to pure you know, pure you know, detection. There's mm -hmm. nothing they can do now except stay at home. Even the Phoenix having a hard time making any use. Right. And now you know Stu's will get the saturation on his main base. That main base isn't even close to being mined out and it's only got, you know, five workers on it. What would you do if you were Stu's in this situation? Um right now GG I would definitely, isn't an option. I, I would definitely get a cannon in my main. I would have already gotten a cannon in my main, mm -hmm. and it would just have to be... I would be chronoing out probes and trying to defend where I can catch back up because my harassment's failing. Gotcha. Do you think he stands a chance? Right now, not... At the, not if, uh, if he's left alone for long enough, mm -hmm. yes. But Arya's probably going to hit him with a timing push, and... Yep, he's moving out now. Let me speak no sooner. <laughs> That's that's the difference right here is uh you know Stu's is going to move those stalkers out there to wipe out the proxy. Uh -huh. That's great, but he does not know about this main army coming towards him. He does not have the production to keep it up. He is going to drop that pylon, that cannon a little too late. The mm -hmm. war prism already did its job. And this is getting this is getting scary for him. I feel like Arya, you know, he is actually 26 supply ahead. And that's decimating at these below 100 supply levels. Right. And here it comes. So Stu's going to time warp here. The Void Rays are going to get targeted down. That's really smart. They're not going to be able to do a bunch of damage. That's it. There's no way Stu's can really recover from this. Poor Stasik, man. Poor guy. Yeah. Uh, bad enough he's rushing, but now he's got to lose, too. And, you know, <laughs> that's just, you know, as we talked about, You've got to stop that Dark Templar harass. Again, let's look in the base right now. That He he never stopped that. He's no. still got those DTs in that base dropping in from the warp prism. Yep. Even you know, though he walled it, off that ramp, he still... No yeah, he, uh And it makes you wonder, you know, why didn't he choose to put a cannon in that base sooner? And I think he was so concerned about protecting his front line that mm -hmm. he just... He let that attrition happen, and that's really what hurt him. Remember, ladies... If you only protect the front door, someone may enter the back. Guys, thanks in the for rear with the gear. In the rear with the gear, two in the pink, one in the stink. Guys, if you enjoyed this cast, please, please hit like and share on YouTube. Give this to your friends. Every click counts. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in game number eight. Bye bye.